Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully you have heard by now that Google Jamboard is shutting down by the end of 2024, but hold your tears. The good news is there are way better tools available for you and your students. My personal favorite is FigJam, which is an online digital whiteboard from Figma that can be used for collaborative learning with class discussions, group activities, brainstorming, and the best part is it is completely free for teachers. In this video, we're gonna explore how to get started using FigJam with your students. So grab your device of choice and get ready to follow along. In order to make it a little bit easier, we're gonna break this down into four phases. We're gonna scaffold it, if you will. Phase number one is just teacher exploration. Now, as with any tech tool, it is important that you are familiar with it before you introduce it to your students. I'm not saying you need to be an expert. Trust me, along the way, your students will end up teaching you things about the tool you didn't even know, but you at least need to know and understand the basics. If you have not yet tried FigJam and you want an overview, definitely check out my tutorial video where I walk you through the basics of getting started using FigJam from the teacher perspective, as well as share some pros and cons you might consider when it comes to using it for the classroom. I do suggest following along with the tutorial on your own device. That way you can get a feel for how the Figma website is organized, as well as how some of the features operate within a FigJam whiteboard. There is also a fantastic K-12 educator training all about FigJam available for free on the Figma website. So I will link that for you down below, as well as the FigJam Design Lab, which is a free hour long self-paced course available on Fried Online. If you can, it's also beneficial to try it out with a teacher friend so you can start to explore some of those collaborative tools such as the cursor chat, the spotlight and follow feature, as well as the comments so you know what to expect once students start collaborating together on the same board. Once you feel comfortable using FigJam behind the comfort of your own screen, my next recommendation would be to use it in real time with your students during a lesson, but where only you as the teacher have access. For example, you might insert a screenshot of a text passage or a math problem and model solving it using some of the tools within FigJam, like the markers and the stamps and text boxes and shapes. That way students can see what the tool looks like. They can see you interacting with the tool. And then if you have access to a device with a touch screen, like a smart board or a Promethean board, you can even invite students up to interact with the file as well without actually being inside of the file on their own device. And that brings us to phase number two, which is individual student exploration. Once you have explored using FigJam from the teacher perspective, you are ready to invite students into the FigJam world on their own individual digital whiteboards. Just like how you got comfortable using the tools and features on your own, you want to give students the same opportunity to kind of get all of their sillies out as they play around with some of the tools and features of FigJam, but within the boundaries of their own board. Now, before you jump too far into this phase, make sure you contact the Figma team to ensure your district is set up with the free student licenses through their partnership with Google. So the link for that will be down in the description box. Now you can share a copy of a FigJam whiteboard with each individual student a few different ways. If you use Google Classroom, you are in luck because FigJam now has a Google Classroom integration. All you have to do is click on share in the top right corner of a FigJam file, select share to Google Classroom, and then select make a copy for each student. A dialog box will appear and allow you to select the class you wanna share it with and how you want to share it by creating an assignment, material, or making an announcement. If you use a different LMS, don't worry, you can actually create a force copy link that will automatically generate a duplicate of the file for anyone that clicks on it. Once again, you're gonna click share in the top right corner of a FigJam file. Make sure it says anyone can view under who has access 
and click copy link. I then suggest opening a new tab and pasting the link in the address bar. You're gonna delete everything from the question mark and beyond in the last part of the URL and replace it with slash duplicate. Then you can copy this new link that you created and paste it anywhere your students have access, such as an LMS or a class website. For this first exploration with FigJam, I recommend having students go through kind of a training file, almost like a boot camp, if you will, where they complete different activities to learn how the different tools and features of FigJam work. Now, I know you're busy and you're like, Michelle, I don't have time to create that. Don't worry, I actually have a template for you, which I will link down in the description box. Now, I recommend making sure students are familiar with the following tools and features to ensure that they can use the tool successfully. First of all, they need to know how to pan the infinite canvas because that can be kind of new for some students. Also zooming in and out to view and edit the file, being able to create and edit sticky notes, utilizing the ink tools such as the marker and the highlighter, how to multi-select different features or items on the board, as well as the undo button. The undo button, if all else fails, is their best friend. Now, depending on the grade level you teach and your students' familiarity with digital tools, you may be able to bypass this and jump right into an academic activity, but I do recommend starting them on their own whiteboards to gain that comfort before they start actually collaborating together. Now to help this initial exploration go a little bit smoother, some recommendations I have are to actually model for students how to gain access to the file. So showing them where they need to go, what they need to click on, maybe modeling how to complete an activity or two on the file. So again, they can see what is expected of them. And you might even show them a finished version of the file. That way they know exactly what it looks like when they're done and then make sure they have directions for what to do when they finish. Regardless, I highly recommend working in some reflection time at the end of the activity so that as a class, students can share what they enjoyed about it because that will help you plan future lessons, what they found challenging because then you know what areas of friction you need to help them overcome the next time, as well as what questions they have so you can either answer them or find the answer if you don't already know, but this will really help you gauge their level of comfort when it comes to using the digital tool, which you can then use to plan future lessons. And then you're ready for phase three. We're getting into the collaboration with small groups. Once you feel that your students have gotten enough experience using their own FigJam whiteboards, you are ready to have them start collaborating together on a single whiteboard, but in a small group setting, because again, we're scaffolding here. This will allow them to experience FigJam with multiple users and start to get familiar with some of those collaborative tools that I mentioned you hopefully explored with a teacher friend back in phase one. It'll be much easier for students to navigate these features if they're only working with two to three other students on a file, and it'll be much easier for you as the teacher to troubleshoot any issues that arise along the way. Again, the group size that you choose is really dependent on the grade level that you teach as well as your students, because we all know some classes can handle it better than others, but it could be as simple as having students work just with a partner, so there's only two students on a single board, or in a group as large as about four, at least for the initial exploration, then you can maybe expand it beyond that for the next one. Now, unlike the individual student exploration for small group collaboration, multiple users need access to the same board. So you're gonna need to create a board for each different group. Now, the good news is once you create one board, it's as simple as duplicating the file for each subsequent group, which takes just a matter of seconds. When it comes to sharing these boards with your students, again, there's a few different ways you can go about it. If you are a Google Classroom user, once again, click on share in the top right corner of a FigJam file, select share to Google Classroom, but this time you're gonna select let students join and edit this file directly. Again, a dialog box will appear and allow you to select the class you wanna share it with, as well as how you wanna share it by creating an assignment material or making an announcement. But since you are only sharing it with certain students, you wanna select 
just those students from your roster before posting. And again, if you don't use Google Classroom and you use another LMS, you're still gonna click on share in the top right corner, change the share settings from anyone can view to anyone can edit, click save and click copy link. Then it's as simple as sharing that link with that group of students. Now for this first collaborative experience, I recommend having your small groups work together to complete either a brainstorming activity or maybe a small group discussion. But again, you don't need to create these from scratch, okay? Your time is too valuable for that. Figma has already done the work for you. They have an incredible database of pre-made templates for free that you can use and even go in and customize to fit your needs. You can actually browse templates right within a FigJam board, and you can even select student and educator on the left-hand side, but I also recommend checking out figma.com slash at K12 education. It will be linked in the description box for you, but let me just tell you, this is a gold mine for free resources you can use in your classroom. So definitely start there. Some of the ones that really stood out for me for the purpose of this initial small group collaborative activity include day one in Fig Jam exploring with students template, all about me activity, let me introduce myself activity, or the dynamite team review. And I'm sure you already knew this, but as a reminder, when groups are working, make sure you are facilitating them. You're moving around the room, you're answering questions and helping to troubleshoot any issues that arise. And again, to help this initial collaborative experience run just a little bit smoother, I recommend modeling as much of this as possible for the class before your students get started. So again, show them how to get access to the file and then go ahead and invite one to two students into a board with you so the class can start to see some of those collaborative tools and that multi-user experience Experience where cursors are flying around the screen before you release them to experience it on their own. And again, have that reflection time at the end so that your students can share their struggles, what they really enjoyed, and you can better plan for the next activity. And then you're ready for phase four, which is whole class collaboration. After a few small group collaborative activities, you are ready to graduate your students to a whole class collaboration where all of your students are together on one Fig Jam board. Now you have to go into this phase almost anticipating that it's going to feel chaotic. It's a big change to go from two to three cursors flying around on your screen to suddenly 20 to 30 plus cursors moving all about. Plus, because more students are operating within the same file, that means there will be more elements popping up, disappearing, moving around like shapes and text boxes, sticky notes, stamps. And while that can be very exciting for some students, it may also be a little bit overwhelming for others. There's a lot of visual stimulation and for some students that can lead to frustration. If needed, you can toggle off the multiplayer cursors by clicking the main menu button, hovering over view and selecting multiplayer cursors. But keep in mind, this is a feature that a lot of students really enjoy. It makes it feel more interactive when they can see their peers actually moving around on the screen, but it is an option that's there if you need it. As you would with any activity, make sure you set clear expectations so students know what is allowed, what's not allowed, what happens if they're not following the rules, and remind them that a fun collaborative tool like FigJam ultimately is a privilege, and it's something that you can always kind of revoke <laughs> if you need to bring your students back to more of a small group setting or even an individual setting. But thankfully, FigJam has kind of thought ahead and they have a lot of built-in tools that will really help you navigate this potential chaos of all of your students collaborating on a single board. For example, you can lock elements, which will prevent your students from moving them around. You can also create and hide sections so you can kind of pace your lesson and reveal a little bit at a time. Plus there is revision history. So you can always go back, you can restore a previous version, almost like reset your file if needed, or even create multiple versions of that same file. You can name those version histories and it makes it really easy to undo any of that messiness that occurs. But don't let that scare you. If you have followed those previous phases, you and your students are ready for this next step. And it is really exciting when you can all come together on a single whiteboard. So unlike the small group collaboration, because you only need one single whiteboard, the way that you share it is just a little bit different. 
If you are using Google Classroom, you're gonna use the let students join and edit this file directly option, and then keep all of your students on your roster selected when you share, or copy and paste that link with anyone can edit access anywhere your students can click on it, such as an LMS or a class website. Again, browse those pre-made templates to find one that would be great for a whole class collaborative experience. But for the initial time that you do this, I do recommend choosing one that has some more simple tools and features and then building your students up to some of the fancier widgets. For example, the triangle, circle, square, or rose, thorn, bud activity would require students to simply type in sticky notes, which is gonna be a nice, easy template to start with, whereas the friendship bracelet builder is gonna have students editing shapes, and the circle, square, star brainstorm is gonna prompt students to use the photo booth widget to add photos, which are a little bit more involved. Now, if you wanna scaffold this even more, you can actually have your students work in small groups, but on a single Fig Jam whiteboard with a designated spot for each group. A great template for this is the Jot Spot Collaborative Activity. And then when your students are ready, it is helpful to have a designated spot for each individual student on the whiteboard, at least initially. Again, a great template for this would be the 321 audience feedback template. These are all free. I will have them linked for you down in the description box. Here are some final tips and tricks to help this run even smoother. When it comes to that first initial exploration as a class, you might consider giving students view access to a Fig Jam file and then inviting two to three very trusted students at a time to join you with edit access on that file. This is a great motivator for students because they wanna be the ones with the edit access and you can always revoke that access at any time if needed. It's also really helpful to have specific written directions with each activity on the board that you want students to complete. So if they got distracted by one of the tools on the board, they didn't hear you give directions, they have something to refer back to. VigJam also has a voice memo widget that will allow you to record voice messages and leave them right there on the VigJam file. So that's a great way to provide oral directions to your students as well. It can also be a game changer to have a designated cursor space that you want your students to hover over while you are giving directions. Now, some teachers have called this the cursor penalty box. Personally, I like calling it the cursor cooler because it's where their cursors go to chill out. <laughs> but you can also use stickers and arrows to serve as signposts on your Fig Jam board so students know where to go to next because again, that infinite canvas can be a little bit overwhelming. I already mentioned you can lock elements which will prevent them from getting edited or moved. You can create sections to group elements together. You can show or hide those sections in order to help pay the activities, but spread them out. You've got an infinite canvas. There's no reason everything has to be all jumbled up together. By adding in that breathing room between your activities, it will prevent the traffic jam of cursors, but it also makes it a little bit less visually stimulating for your students. And again, if they know how to zoom in or out, it'll be really easy for them to locate those activities. Again, modeling and reflecting are your best friend when it comes to using any new digital tool but keep in mind, there will be some students who grasp it very quickly. Like it will humble you how quickly they grasp it. And those students can become almost like your backup geek squad or come up with a better name than that. But they can be your go-to students to help support their peers and troubleshoot along the way. And ultimately think about it as a way to model growth mindset for your students. Just like your students, you're gonna make mistakes. It's okay, that's how you learn, that's how you grow, and this is a great opportunity to model that for your students. Again, I truly love Fig Jam, and I think both you and your students will as well. Hopefully this video gave you some tips and tricks to try out as you start using it with your students this upcoming school year, and the whole experience can go just a little bit smoother. All of the links that I mentioned, including the overview tutorial video, the free course, all of those free templates are down in the description box. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I will try to get back to you, but also share any ideas you have for how you could use Fig Jam in the classroom this upcoming school year. As always, give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.